Hello and welcome back to another episode of Subway Talk, where we just watch me play a game of Subway Surfers while I talk about stuff. Where shall we start? Well, I tried to record another snack bar video, the one with the cats. It didn't work. It did not work at all. I could not get more than a minute worth of footage in at a time. I didn't realize that, so I recorded for over half an hour. And when I came back and stopped recording and checked to see what I had achieved, it was a minute, the last minute of the recording. So I decided to absolutely scrap that idea. So here we are with Subway Talk to talk about that. And a few other updates that I have not mentioned. The first update is with StarCraft 2. I have, go I have tried to download the game and play it. Unfortunately, so far, it has been able to evade my prying hands. I can't get StarCraft 2 to work, so I will be putting it on hold. I don't know when I will be able to post a video on StarCraft 2 or play it right now in the first place, get it to actually run on my computer. So, yeah, it'll take some time, but eventually, I I'm certain that eventually I'll be able to get it out. That's the plan. Um, number two is I tried to record a horror game. Did not work. So I'm hoping that when I did start out on my net, on the actual horror game series that I intend to start in August, I will be able to rectify that problem, which is causing quite a bit of pain right now with the microphone when I play video games and the mic is all jagged and stuff or just not picking up volume at all. Um, otherwise, we'll see about that. Um, also going to point out that I'm going on a trip soon. So for the coming week or so, a lot of the videos are going to be very quick fire stuff on the, um, I jumped over a jetpack, um, quick fire content on my dream leagues idea. Since it's still the academy division, every thing is just going to be put into a bunch of montages. So I'll just do exactly that and stick a bunch of things into a bunch of montages and see how that goes. Now I'm hoping for the best. Uh, yeah, that's so the upcoming week, it won't be much proper Let's Play content, more just uh, montage, montage, montage because of the trip. And so I need some th video ideas that I can just upload quickly without too much hassle and with Wi-Fi that's not fantastic. So that's the plan. Uh, I would also like to talk about Barbieheimer. Yes, I watched it. I talked about this extensively in the Cats video until I realized I wasn't recording any of it because it was deleted for some reason. But both are good and very good movies, actually. Both are fantastic. Um, let's start with Barbie first because that's the one I watched first. It was a solid film, a very good film. It really took the source material of Barbie and really turned it into something modern and fresh. A very interesting take. Um, I recommend watching the film to get more of the message because it is, while it is a very common message in a lot of shows and TV nowadays, something that's being pushed forward more. Um, I believe that it is best that you watch it straight from there and see because it is a good film and it's definitely worth the watch. Um, I will say that on the topic of what Barbie was taught, was the message it tried to send across, um, it did not make a mistake that some films have made when it comes to this message, where it, it takes itself too seriously, and it pushes and pushes and pushes and pushes, and it forgets the fundamentals of what the film is in the first place. In this case, Barbie is in fact a satire, I think. I would say it's a satire comedy. It's a very good movie overall, and I wholeheartedly endorse it to be viewed by people who want to watch movies. It's a good movie. It's a very good movie. Okay, I would give it... i probably give it an 8 out of 10. I give it an 8 out of 10. I do not take... I'm terrible when it comes to giving number scores to these things. I'm great at just explaining why, if I like it, I can explain why I like it and stuff, but I cannot give a good number score. D don't take the number score for granted. I'm just saying it because 
makes it easier. Uh, yeah. Then there's Oppenheimer. Now, I am not the biggest history buff when it comes to the Manhattan Project. So, that is not something that I would... I'm not going to mention too much of how the historical points in Oppenheimer are accurate or not, because I personally do not know. But it was a very good film. And if you have three hours to spare, I wholeheartedly recommend that you, even if you don't, make some time and watch this three-hour film, if you are of age, of course. It is a good movie, a very good film, and I really think it captures the essence of the scientists that were working on the atomic bombs and the way they tested it. If you watch, I recommend watching it in cinema because that way you really experience the sheer force of the atomic bomb test, which is shown in the film. It also really captures how doing these things can lay impact to all sorts of different people and the scientists involved and how over time people's perceptions change on certain people. It's a good film, a good drama. Christopher Nolan has done it again. The star, the cast is fantastic and I would give it a nine personally. I give it a nine. Good film, good film. Both are fantastic. This summer has been jam-packed full of amazing films. These two are just added to that list and they are leaps and bounds better than a few of the other films that have been released recently. It is just that movie. These are the two movies that I wholeheartedly would recommend to watch. If you are an adult with a family, I recommend you watch Barbie with your kids and then come back and watch Oppenheimer or do it if I, in another order, whatever you want. It's a fantastic set of movies. We'll watch. I recommend it completely. So yeah, that's that. Um, also, I'm going to announce now that on October, in October, there is going to be the release of, of course, the Five Nights at Freddy's movie, which I intend to watch, hopefully. And um, because of that, I've decided that starting in August, I will play the Five Nights at Freddy's series. I will play every single game that is on the franchise. I'm not saying I'll complete it all, but I'll definitely try to complete each one before I move on to the next game. But if I think it doesn't fit a schedule to get all of the games in before the movie comes out, I will just go to the next game, even if I haven't completed the five nights. But right now, it is just a matter of the simple fact that I will play each game in the lead up to the movie's release. I hope... I'm hoping that that's a good idea. I'm just going to do it anyways. Doesn't matter. Just going to play some games. Um, I will also be playing, of course, the AR mobile game for Five Nights at Freddy's. I'm not too sure when I'll squeeze that into the chronology of the video game series. It came out much after a few others, but it's just also much easier for me to record the AR video game compared to the actual in-canon ser- uh, video games. As I said, I've tried recording horror video games before, but I I can't get the mics to work properly, so I'll try to sort it out before then. Hopefully it works. So yeah, that's for August and September. Those two months, I will just... I will sort out Five Nights at Freddy's. At the same time, I also have to deal with university stuff, so that's all good. Yeah. It's all gonna be fine, I reckon. Should be, should be. Um, nothing else really to announce, I don't think, or talk about. Not, um, what comes to mind that now, at this point, since I started talking about Barbie and Open I'm just thinking of, like, other shows and stuff. Like, Netflix One Piece live action is coming out. Very soon, I must say. Early August, I'm quite sure. Oof, that would be good. Wait, early August? Late August? Somewhere in August, it's coming out. Looking forward to it. Avatar The Last Airbender. Now, I am worried because... Um, I saw the costumes and it is definitely cartoon accurate, great. But um, I'm worried about the what's the term for it? Oh yeah, the fact that the creators left very early into the project because of I think what I don't remember what it was. I think it was creative differences, and that's that concerns me a little bit. I'm still definitely gonna watch it, of course, no doubt about it. Just something at the back of my mind. Hopefully it, hopefully the show is still a solid show that pays true homage 
to the actual source material, the cartoon. I look forward to see how they decide to spread out the episodes and what they intend to add. Because I heard that the runtime is much longer than the t- typical episodes. So I'm wondering if they're adding lore, adding more depth to the characters. Not sure how you can do that. The characters have great depth and great playouts. But I'm interested in seeing how it goes. Seeing what changes they make and the whole thing. Hopefully we'll see what happens. Also, Percy Jackson. Yes, it. I don't know when it's coming out. I'm quite sure it's sometime next year. I've been wait uh, compared to the One Piece and all and Avatar. I've not received any word about it. It's funny because I. They announced the One Piece live action, and now they already announced its release date. In contrast, Percy Jackson's series was announced a while ago, but they have not announced much yet to my current knowledge of the time I'm voiceovering this recording. So I'm not too sure what's going on there. I look forward, however, to seeing what they may and how it plays out because Percy Jackson is something I read a while back and I'm interested in seeing it. Seeing how they capture the books into a TV series because there's something a lot of people have always said in the past. Why would you in cap- capture a book series in a movie when you can just turn it into a TV series with multiple episodes to really flesh it out? So I look forward to seeing how this turns out. Um, yeah, that's about it, I think. I'm not sure I'm missing too much. A few... No, no, I'm not missing anything. I don't think there's much else coming on to anywhere. Right? Yeah, no, that I that should be all that I can think of right now. So let's take a moment just to admire my subway surfing skills. Yes, very good, very good. Jump, very good jump. Yeah, I'm, I don't remember how this one goes. I quite sure I will die eventually. I know I die eventually. That I have to die. I don't remember when I die. I think it's at like 1.4, is it? 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, something in the 1 point something. I know I didn't make 2 mil in this one, unfortunately. I haven't done so in a while. should really get back on the grind for subway surfers. I'm kidding. No one gets on the grind for subway surfers. Um, but yeah... I can't really think of too much else. Uh, no, no, I really can't. Nothing else really pops to mind on anything that requires mentioning on my part. No, no. So, that, since I can't seem to find any tangents anymore to go off of, which happens quite a lot these days. My tangent skills are not as good as they used to be. Like Compared to the first one we did this, 45 minutes long or something like that. God damn, I talked for a long time. Well, that was the first one. I was just trying to get down what I would intend to do with the channel and what my thoughts on certain political topics were, which was dumb. It's not dumb, actually. It's fine. No, one, As I said before, and I'm going to say it again, when you're as small as I am at the start, trust me, no one really gives a damn about what you say. That you, re- you would have to find someone and say it to their face and they have to be very liberal or very conservative or very something for it to actually render a reaction. Saying it online though when you're a nobody, not too much. So yeah, okay, there we go, I died. Don't know what happened there, I didn't move to the left for some reason, whatever. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed this round of Subway Talk. Please, if you enjoy, do consider subscribing and liking the video. Um, Take care of yourself in the future, and that is all. Until next time, I will see you. Goodbye.